All right, so I decided this is a good time for us to revisit command line arguments for a bit. If we look at this, we're getting two values from the command line, right? And we're using those values in our while loop. So the question is, what happens if our user does not provide us with what we need? Right, so the user didn't give us what we needed. It didn't work. So we probably want to, to handle that. So we're going to quickly go through how we can handle that. We talked about we talked about some of the some of the command line arguments, but I don't think we talked about this one. There's a special um, another special variable called dollar pound sign. I screwed that up. I hate when that happens. Um, dollar pound sign or hashtag or whatever it is you crazy kids are calling that thing. The, that thing nowadays that tells you how many command line arguments were entered. So if we run the while script with nothing, that didn't run it. If we run it with no arguments. We get a zero. We run it with four ar four arguments. We get a four. So we can use that variable to make sure we have the number of command line arguments we want. So we're going to do that. We're going to do it using if, right? Remember, we can use ifs for comparisons. If dollar pound sign not equal to then echo. You need to enter and in, enter enter two numbers. Um, if then phi, and if they didn't give us the number of arguments, we want to exit. So now I can uh, run it, and if I don't get the right number of arguments, it it exits. So if I run it with a proper number of arguments, hey, 3 through 10. So that's the most basic basic way to do that. There's another special variable that if you want to make your, uh, your message look more professional. Normally, if you mess up um, if you mess up the uh, command, it tells you a usage message. And you can also put the command name in the uh, variable dollar zero is 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 uh, holds the name of the program that was run. So in this case, our program is called wild.sh. So we run it without the proper number of arguments. It says wild.sh usage. You need to enter the two numbers. So that makes it a little better. Another problem we might have that I don't know if I'm going to solve right now or not, but our our script is counting from. The, the first number up to the second number. So if we enter a larger first number and a smaller second number, it doesn't do anything. So if we want to if we want to help help our users out, we could put more uh, error checking code in here, right? We know that we want we know that we want dollar two dollar if if dollar num one is greater than or equal to dollar num two, then echo dollar zero usage. The first number must be smaller than the second number. Number, and we'll exit if that's not true, and then we need the phi to end that up, to finish that up. So let's see if that's going to run. Ugh. There we go. There we go. So the first number must be smaller than the second number. So uh, yeah, that didn't actually work either, so I must have some kind of issue with my script. Oh, there it is. So I'm comparing dollar num one to dollar num two, but I didn't set those values yet. So uh, I can move these two lines up. Move those two lines up, uh, and now it should work as expected. Or I could have just used dollar one and dollar two in that comparison if I wanted. Uh, so let's see if that works properly now. All right, two to ten works. Ten to two. yeah. So yeah, so let's go back in there. So yeah, so I uh, I I referenced the variables 
uh, before I'd set them. So that's why that didn't work, but now it is working as expected. So to summarize, you can check to make sure they give you the number of arguments you're expecting. You can validate the arguments contain what you expect them to contain uh, based on what you're going to do. Um, should you do that every time? Well, it all depends. If you're writing a script that you're the only one that's going to run and you can open the script and look at it every time you run it. If you can't remember what the, the usage is, then you can do that. If you're writing a script for other people to run, you might want to implement some sort of usage message in there. Uh, but really, it's all up to you and how, how user-friendly you want to make your, uh, your script be.